everyone, Michael B. The Game Genie here, and today on Game Genie Reviews, we're going to be taking a look at the Midway Legacy Edition from Arcade 1UP. That's right, today we're going to be taking a look at the Midway Legacy Edition from Arcade 1UP. For those of you who saw my Capcom Legacy Edition review, you know that this is more than just another Mortal Kombat, as it features the three games from the original cabinet, as well as nine additional games with a ton of gameplay variety. Let's find out if this cabinet is a flawless victory for Arcade 1UP, or will the cabinet design and control scheme make this one to avoid? So here it is in my game room, the Midway Legacy Edition cabinet, and of course it looks beautiful. That is one thing Arcade 1UP always does. It's a really good looking cab, but is it functional? Well let's get this out of the way right away, and not spend most of the video harping on it. The same problems that I outlined with my Capcom Legacy Edition cabinet persist with the Midway Legacy Edition as well. This shouldn't come as a surprise as both cabinets have identically shaped designs, complete with the shape of the side panel, placement of the marquee, angle of the screen, and control panel size and placement. So for those not familiar with these issues, let's cover it pretty quickly. The cabinet has a line of sight issue where anyone roughly 5'8 and above will notice the top of the screen is cut off from your viewing angle while standing in front of the cabinet. This seems to be the result of the screen angle being more straight up than the screen angle we've been used to since Wave 3 and the marquee being roughly an inch shorter than the marquees on all the other Arcade 1UP cabinets. I'm not sure why this was done, but it sucks that I can't stand in front of this cab. Number 2 is the control panel is really small and recessed into the cabinet for some reason, which makes for a really tight fit for playing these games and 2 player is almost impossible for grown adults. I'm not sure why this was done with MK as the original cab never had raised ledges on the sides of the control panel, but I assume they just wanted to reuse the same design from the Capcom Legacy here. The end result is you literally have to rest your hand on the ledge while playing, which isn't comfortable and you run the risk of rubbing some of the air off the side panel where your hands rest. In fact, both of these issues make it uncomfortable to play this cabinet and like I said in my last review of the Capcom Legacy Edition, ergonomics should never be an afterthought when designing a video game product of this nature. It really is a shame this wasn't tested more before going out to the public as these issues could have been caught. Well, with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that are done right with this cabinet, and maybe some of these things will make this cabinet a must-have. Looks-wise, it's Mortal Kombat 2, or as I call it, Mortal Kombat Blue. I was kind of surprised that they reused the art from Mortal Kombat 2, as with the Capcom Legacy they used a different Street Fighter 2 cabinet art that looks incredible, but here they stuck with the MK2 art. I mean, I am not complaining because this is my favorite Mortal Kombat cabinet, but I really expected them to use either Mortal Kombat or Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Well, they stuck with Mortal Kombat 2, but it isn't exactly the same as the original release, as this one really accentuated the blue in the lightning to a ridiculous amount, where the background seems blue now instead of the black we are all familiar with. I have no idea why you would make this change as it veers further away from looking like a recreation of the original cabinet and is completely unnecessary, but maybe someone at RK1UP really, and I mean really likes blue, and here we are. All kidding aside, outside of the blueification of this cabinet, the art looks fantastic, and with the new side panel shape, looks more like the original arcade. The marquee actually looks pretty awesome. I previously had the Arcade 1UP first party light up marquee that I added to my original Arcade 1UP cabinet and thought that looked pretty good too, except the black looked a little washed out in areas when lit up. I am happy to report that these same issues do not persist with this marquee and the black looks great and full when lit up and the colors all pop. The wings are still here however and will cut off a portion of the marquee from an angle but viewing it straight on, it looks great. The screen is really good despite the issue with the angle that I mentioned earlier. The design of course is the same as with the Wave 2 Mortal Kombat cab so there should be no surprises there and of course it looks great. The screen itself is the BOE monitor that we all know and love and it's so nice to see this game displayed with such vibrant colors and the appropriate contrast that this screen presents. Seriously, the upgrade in screen quality is almost worth replacing the original for the Legacy Edition alone. 
The front kick plate features the new coin door decal sticker and gone are the nameplates. I have always been vocal about the fact I didn't mind the game logos being displayed here but the coin door kick plate really adds to the arcade illusion and now I want all my cabinets to look this way. The riser is really nice with the front featuring an all black look with a very subtle Mortal Kombat logo on it and adorned with the same red trim that surrounds the cabinet. The side has a similar look to the side of the cabinet featuring the same MK2 logo as towards the top of the side panel as well as a bolt of lightning throughout and the same questionable blue shading. I left the control panel for last because this conversation is going to slide directly into the games because well, it has to. For this cabinet they of course went with an identical button layout and design as the original MK2 Arcade 1-Up cabinet which looks fantastic and works so well for the Mortal Kombat games. Well, outside of one minor issue where some of the buttons seem to be sticking at times. This apparently is caused by sloppy drilling of the holes around where the buttons are placed but luckily I have only experienced this with one button so far. I said works well for the Mortal Kombat games, but the question is, does it work well for the other games on the cabinet? This cabinet comes packed with 12 games, and these games are so diverse, not just in genre, but in control scheme as well. The cabinet of course features all the games on the Rampage Arcade 1UP, and of course there are two immediate questions. How does Rampage, a 3 player game, work, and are the Defender controls better? Well, with Rampage, they essentially had to rewrite the original arcade ROM to make it a two-player game, where you get to choose your character manually and not where you play on the control deck. The simple answer for Defender is, of course, it's not perfect, because it would need to have essentially a dedicated cab for that, but it is much better. There is also a simple mode that should really help some people that are struggling. There are some other very unique control designs for other new games included as well, with the first one that I am extremely excited to talk about being Root Beer Tapper. I have always wanted a Tapper RK1 up with Root Beer and Timber on the same cab, but if this is as close as we'll get, I'll be cool with that too. Tapper is an awesome game and RK1 up have done a great job with controls here as you can either play with one hand controlling the direction of your character while a button deploys the tap, or you can use the second player's joystick as the tap in a twin stick motion, just like the arcade game. I love it. Tubin is a super fun arcade game where no joystick is needed and you actually control the directions of your character using just buttons on the control panel. This works great but the only caveat is it's a vertical game on a horizontal screen but they added side art which fills the sides in and makes it look a little better. Wizard of War is a new game to me that is also becoming a quick favorite but it uses a super weird setup where player one plays with the second player's joystick and controls. Of course there's also Paperboy which really doesn't play like the arcade version at all because you're using a joystick and this is meant to be played specifically with a unique bike handlebar controller. They were never going to make a standalone Paperboy so this is as good as it's going to get but it's hard to control. Still fun but hard to control and not arcade authentic. Last but not least, this cab has bubbles, and it just makes me so happy to see this game on a cabinet after watching John D on so many shows getting harassed about when an arcade one up was going to release bubbles, and he swore it wasn't going to come, but yet here it is. Also, bubbles is weird, but so, so much fun. Anyways, with that out of the way, I would like to give you some gameplay from each of the 12 included games so you can see how they play for yourself.
So guys, that is my look at the Arcade 1UP Midway Legacy Edition and Cabinet, and I have to say I am so impressed with the quality and the diversity of the games included. This could be a one-stop arcade setup for most people if you were only going to buy one Arcade 1UP cabinet because of the games included. Unfortunately, the problems that I mentioned in my last review persist here with the line of sight and uncomfortable control panel, but if you can see past those issues, this is a can't miss cabinet. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you think think of the Arcade 1UP Midway Legacy Edition cabinet. Thank you very much for watching. This is Michael B. the Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time.